What is going on, Jets Nation? Welcome back to Jets Media. Today, we're breaking down the New York Jets roster heading into the NFL Draft. The New York Jets have had a fantastic offseason, and we haven't even got to the NFL Draft yet, okay? The Joe Douglas-led New York Jets brought in so many new players to this Jets team in free agency and the trade market that I want to break down and give you guys the potential starting offense and starting defense because I'm absolutely loving the way this New York Jets team looks on paper heading into the NFL draft. And more importantly, I'm excited to hear your guys' thoughts in the comment section down below of the New York Jets on paper. And I know it's on paper. The Jets always do this good in the offseason. The vibes are always up. And we've never been able to transition the high vibes in the offseason into the actual season. But the reality is... You look at this roster on paper, it's hard not to be excited. Joe Douglas has done his job, and then he's going to be passing the baton after the NFL draft to Robert Sala to try to lead this football team to the promised land of where we're all hoping this Jets team can go in this upcoming season. Now, before we get deeper into the video, folks, don't forget to simply hit the like button if you enjoy the video here and comment down below your thoughts and subscribe to the channel here on Jets Media. I'm excited to be back home. As you guys know, there's been some personal stuff going on in my life. My niece was just born. I was in Virginia all week at my sister's house. I'm back home and I'm buckled up, ready for more content leading into the NFL draft. I know it's been a little, not a lot of content here on Jets Media these past few weeks, and that is the reason for it. But now that the NFL NFL draft is right around the corner and your boys back home expect a lot of more content. I'm super excited. All right. Enough of me talking about my personal life. Let's get into the Jets defense. Okay. They deserve to be talked about first because they are elite. Okay. Now this is the potential 2024 starting defense with the nickel package of Michael Carter out there for the Jets heading into the season. Now there's really only one new addition. You can argue, too, because Chuck Clark did not play last year, and he is going to be a starting safety, but we actually shall see because Ashton Davis has been brought back officially a few days ago, which was huge for the Jets. Definitely expect Ashton Davis to be on this field with this Jets team in a lot of different formations. Even if he doesn't start, he's going to be on the field a lot, but you look at what this Jets defense looks like on paper. This is the starters, and I think we all know the defensive line, you can't really just put four players out there. You got to include the entire lineup, okay? I just put JFM inside because he's getting paid the most, and he is definitely going to be a big-time piece of that defensive line. You can sub him out for Javon Kinlaw. Obviously, the Jets like to use JFM on the edge as well, not just inside. That's the versatility that he brings. But you look at the starting four on the defensive line with the addition of Hassan Reddick just elevates everything to another level. Quinnen Williams, one of, if not the best defensive tackles in football. And then Jermaine Johnson coming off a breakout year number two. I'm expecting him to go even crazier in year number three. I really am excited to see what Jermaine Johnson brings to the table because he kind kind of took that step. He was a pro bowler last year, but I still see another realm that Jermaine Johnson can tap into, not to mention all the dogs behind him, like Will McDonald, who I think is going to take a similar leap to what Jermaine Johnson did last season in year number two. I don't know if he's going to go crazy and be a pro bowler, but the fact that Will McDonald gets to learn behind Hassan Reddick, who is definitely a exact prototype of what we want Will McDonald to become, is going to be awesome. I'm expecting Will McDonald's snap count to increase, and I think the New York Jets coaching staff are really going to buckle in on him this offseason to make sure he's ready to have a huge impact for this Jets football team. He's going to be the Bryce Huff rep uh, replacement in terms of the closer. In the late in the fourth quarter, third down pass rush uh, scenarios, that will be Will McDonald's opportunity to pin his ear back and go get the quarterback and make a play for this Jets football team. We also brought in Lakey Fatu, a new interior defensive tackle. We brought back Solomon Thomas. We still got Michael Clemens. We got a lot of really fun pieces on this Jets defensive line that we should be excited about. Arguably the best defensive line in football. Now, getting into the next level of the defense, the linebackers in CJ Mosey and Quincy Williams, you can argue this is one of the best, if not the best linebacker duo in the NFL. We're talking about two all pros. First team all pro Quincy Williams last uh, two years ago. Second team all pro for CJ Mosley, a multi time all pro, multi time pro bowler. This is one of those underrated pieces of this Jets defense is our linebackers. They are the heart and the soul. They do everything for this Jets defense. They go sideline to sideline, making plays over the middle of the field, really good in the run game. What more can you say about CJ and Quincy Williams? Really big time pieces. And Robert Sala is a linebacker guy. And the fact that we have Quincy Williams locked up for the contract that we do, and he is at the level that he is on that type of contract tells you how great 
of a coach Robert Sala is in terms of developing the individual talent of Quincy Williams and a lot of other guys on that defense, of course. Yes, I know Sala's got to prove to be a good head coach, and that's more defensive stuff. I totally get that, but the reality is he deserves credit for the development and the breakout of Quincy Williams. Now, getting back into the secondary cornerbacks. I mean, I keep saying this. I feel like a broken record, but arguably one of the best, if not the best, cornerback trios in the league. Sauce Gardner, DJ Reed, and Michael Carter the second. Sauce Gardner, back-to-back first-team All-Pros, elite. The best corner in football. Don't care what the haters say. They don't know ball. DJ Reed, one of the most underrated corners in football. Holds his ground on that side of the ball. Always makes some plays. Will he get beat here and there? Yeah, not a lot. I mean, there's like one game where he got beat over the top consistently, and that was against the Miami Dolphins. I'm not too concerned about DJ Reed losing a step at all. I think we're going to see this still really efficient DJ Reed this season. And Michael Carter II entering a contract year like DJ Reed in the slot. Excellent, excellent zipped-up coverage from Michael Carter II. And then the safety unit. We got Tony Adams, okay, who was coming off his first year starting for the Jets. I think he's another underrated piece to this defense. That play against the Eagles was big time. Love what we saw from Tony Adams last year. I think he's only going to get better. Chuck Clark is right now the starter. I do think Ashton Davis has something to say about it. I also think the Jets could be drafting a safety in this year's NFL draft to really add some more pieces to that secondary. But Chuck Clark was a very... uh, Really good player for the Baltimore Ravens, and Jets fans were excited about him heading into this year before he, of course, tore his ACL in OTA. So the safety unit, you could say, is the weakest link of the Jets roster, but I'm not too concerned about that. I think Tony Adams, again, is going to really step up to the plate, and I love everything about this Jets defense. Now, the offense is interesting, okay? The offense is an interesting one to break down. Jets fans, let me know your thoughts of the defense before we get into the offense. And before we go into the offense, I do want to give a big shout out to a proud sportsbook sponsor of this channel, guys. It's BetUS. You know them very well. And what I want to break down for you guys is the odds, okay? They have the odds now on their website of where the Jets are going to go with pick number 10. Now, as you can see right here, Brock Bowers is the heavy favorite at plus 135 with Fuaga at second at plus 600, Fashanu plus 700 with Roma Dunze. So I'm really curious to get your guys' thoughts, Jets fans. If you're going to put your money where the Jets are going at number 10, where do you going to put it? Now, obviously, the Brock Bowers hype is there. The Bauer boys are really excited right now. They're like, see, Richie, the Jets are going with Bowers. It's the most likely scenario, even on BetUS. But come on now. There's other opportunities out there that you can get more value for your buck. Roma Dunze, a plus 700, is great. Troy Fatanu, a guy that the Jets just brought in for a top 30 visit. I would love the Jets to draft him at number 10. I think that a Dunze is best for your value, but I don't really know if he's going to fall to the Jets at number 10. 10. That's the only thing there. Obviously, you guys know me. I'm all in on Brock Bowers. I'm not saying that I don't want him. But from a betting perspective, you look at all the other uh, odds presented by BetUS, plus 700 for Adunze, plus 900 for Fatanu, or if you really think Brock Bowers is a lock, plus 135 isn't bad either. I might even have some change on that. So big time shout out to BetUS Sportsbook. BetUS, America's favorite sportsbook and casino. Live betting and racebook. We're celebrating 30 years with a historic offer. A 125% sign-up bonus on your first three deposits. Plus 10% gambler's insurance. Get started today. BetUS, where the game begins. Big time shout out to BetUS. Now, let's get into the offense, okay? Here is the offense. Yes, here it is. Woo! This is where the fun begins because we know what the defense brings. It kind of didn't really change. We kind of just broke down last year's defense, if you will. Add in Hassan Reddick, which is ridiculous. But now look at this offense. The entire offensive line is different. Three new starters and a brand new wide receiver. Wow. Joe Douglas said he was going to revamp the offensive line. He wasn't kidding, baby. Let's start off from left to right in the trenches. Tyron Smith. A guy who is generationally one of the best, if not the best, left tackles in football this past decade. He's now a New York Jet. He is going to help this offensive line so much just with his presence and knowledge alone. Everybody's going to be picking his brain, at least I hope. And also, Tyron Smith is going to be a leader that's going to hold this entire offensive line accountable, letting every single player on that offensive line know what it takes to get the job done in the trenches. How can we consistently open up holes for Brees Hall? How can we consistently protect the quarterback, pick up blitzes, pick up stunts, stay on the same page, communication, 
I think Tyron Smith is going to have such a big impact for this Jets football team, not only this year, but for the long haul, right? His presence here is going to really, I'm hopeful at least, this is what's going to happen. Smith's culture and identity of an offensive line is going to stay with this team even when he retires or moves on from the Jets next year because the Jets only have him for a one-year deal. And the next two guys we brought in are both from Baltimore. They play together. They're veterans. They're coming from another franchise that knows how to coach and be a really good offensive line in the Baltimore Ravens. John Simpson played all games last year. He's more of a penalty machine uh, rather than uh, he's a mauler when it comes to running the football and being able to protect the quarterback, but the thing that he needs to clean up is definitely the penalties. An upgrade over Lake and Tomlinson, you ask? Absolutely. Joe Tipman coming off the best rookie center performance last year in the NFL. Going into year number two, I'm excited to see what Joe Tipman brings. He's the wild card for me in this offensive line because if he can take a step and prove to be the franchise center for this Jets football team, getting on the same page with Aaron Rodgers, the center position is really important to have an elite offensive line because they're the ones that's the quarterback of that unit calling out coverages on the same page with the cadence, and then you kick it over to Elijah Vera Tucker coming off the Achilles surgery. If he stays healthy, bro, I'm telling you right now, this offensive line actually has potential to be top 10. You look at it on paper from left to right, if they're all healthy, that is an excellent offensive line. The issue for them has been injuries. And then, of course, Morgan Moses, warrior, Iron Man. We know what he brings to the table at right tackle. Just a great job from Joe Douglas. And the upside is there from the Jets' offensive line. Now, when it comes to the depth, Carter Warren, is going to be the swing tackle. Max Mitchell, Wes Schweitzer. I would love for the Jets to bring back Connor McGovern. And of course, we still have the NFL draft upcoming. And even other guys like a David Bakhtiari, if they wanted to bring in as a backup, if the Jets don't go offensive line in the first round. The opportunities are there to add depth to this unit. But as of right now, the starting five is looking good. Now, going into the playmakers around our quarterback, Aaron Rodgers. Of course, you got Garrett Wilson coming off back-to-back 1,000-yard -back seasons for these New York Jets. He's ready to go nuclear in year number three, going back to number five. I think him and Aaron Rodgers are going to have that connection immediately, and he's going to take the league by storm. Mike Williams, he's going to be probably around like 800 to 1,000 yards is my guess if he can stay healthy. I think Aaron Rodgers is going to key in on him down the field vertically, especially in the red zone as well. Big time weapon for Aaron Rodgers to play with. Right now, I got Xavier Gibson in the slot. Now, I know Alan Lazard's not listed here. He's definitely going to still be on the field. I also expect the Jets to add a receiver in the NFL draft. But Xavier Gibson is an underrated piece of this offense that Jets fans got to start realizing is going to be involved. Gibson is going to be involved in the offense. I'm not saying he's going to start and take you know, targets away from the guys that we prefer to get targets, but Gibson showed a lot as a rookie. And I'm really excited to see what he can do, especially with Aaron Rodgers under center. And then Tyler Conklin, I know there's a big debate between Brock Bowers do we need him? We have Tyler Conklin, who's solid. We got Ruckert. But right now, Conklin is the starting tight end, who I'm completely satisfied with, by the way. If we don't go with Brock Bowers, I think Tyler Conklin is going to have 800-plus yards, eight touchdowns or something like that with the healthy Aaron Rodgers. So Conklin, a very solid tight end in this league that is just waiting for an actual good quarterback to unlock him even further. And then Brees Hall. I think this is going to be Brees Hall's season. Now, if there's one guy in this offense that I have the most... Uh, upside for or most excitement for or the highest expectations it's Brees Hall I think he has an offensive player of the year season ready to come we saw what he did in 17 games coming off an ACL last year the Jets are going to be using him all over the place not just in the run game but of course in the pass attack Nathaniel Hackett realized you know three quarters of the way into the season like oh yeah Brees is actually really good uh with the ball in his hands out of the backfield uh, yeah, use that more often, please. Get Brees Hall the ball. I think he has like 2,000 scrimmage yards potentially underneath his belt this upcoming year. I know this sounds crazy, but my expectations are high because look at the roster. There's no reason why Jets fans' expectations should not be this high because if they don't meet them, it's a disappointment. That's how I look at it. Aaron Rodgers, of course, our quarterback. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> I mean, listen, we don't really know what type of Aaron Rodgers we're getting. We simply don't. We saw four snaps of him. We saw him in the preseason flick over a dime to Garrett Wilson for a touchdown. We saw him in training camp. But the reality is we are not going to know who Aaron Rodgers is as a Jets quarterback until he just gets on the football field. The one thing I'll say is this. I'm not expecting an MVP season. I'm not expecting a top five season from him. All I want is a 
high, above average quarterback that can march down the field and put up a league average point wise. Give us 24 points per game as an offense with Aaron Rodgers. With our defense, we're going to win the division. That's how I look at it. So, folks, let me know your thoughts in the comment section of the New York Jets offense and defense. Love to hear what you guys have to say. This was broken down. I'm excited to hear your guys' thoughts in the comment section. If you stayed all the way to the end of the video, comment down below a jet emoji so I know that you're loyal enough to stay all the way to the end. I'm just playing with you guys. Hit the like button, folks. Your boy's out of here. I'll see you in the next video.